Hello again, Conse. Sorry for the delay on videos, I know it's been a week or two since the last one. I've been in a bit of a slump lately. I mentioned it in that community post, which I'm sorry for not responding to all the comments, by the way. They were all really nice and I especially enjoyed the exploits with the cake ones. But anyway, anyway, uh, I'm planning on using Steamworks in some future videos uh, for some exploity kind of stuff. But before that, before I had videos on the specific methods, I wanted to do a separate video just detailing how the saves coming works, why it works, because it let me go into a bit more detail. I want to talk about some maths and some numbers and, and how to optimize it and stuff like that. I'll quickly detail the method for anybody who hasn't already worked it out, although I'm sure most of you have, but you know, just for completeness sake. The way Steamworks works is you basically spend fuel to roll the dice, and there's nothing to say that you can't get a Celestial or Variant Print really early on in those dice rolls. So even though it takes roughly 30,000 fuel worth of dice rolls to get one of those prints, you don't really have to spend that all in one go. You can do 10,000, save and quit if you don't get any do 10,000, save and quit, keep going. And that way, rather than spending 30,000 per ticket on average, you'll be spending 10,000 per average. The only issue is that does add a bit of time to the process because you have to, you know, you have to check the game and then check what you got and then uh, quit to main menu and then load back in, which adds roughly a minute or two every time you do it. But it does save you a ton of fuel. So why am I discussing this after all this time? Well, the Steamworks saves coming used to be pretty garbage because you would have tons of fuel from the Guiding Lands, but it would take so many hours um, to actually spend that fuel. You would spend at something like 15,000 per hour, and so it would take two hours per Celestial print, which just isn't a very good return on investment. And save scumming only saves fuel, it doesn't save time. In fact, it adds to the time it takes. Um, and because fuel was, wasn't the bottleneck before, it wasn't really worth doing. But now with 10 times mod, um, now gathering the fuel itself is the bottleneck and so saves coming to save that fuel does save you a lot of time uh, sort of long term and I'll talk about the maths of this in detail after I've covered the rest of the video. Playing behind you as you can see are four runs of Steamworks. They all started at 83,000 fuel because I saved my game right at the start and then after spending fuel for about an hour I quit without saving and then spent it again for another hour and repeated the process over and over again. I did it roughly eight times. Um, just to get numbers and again I'll show you the numbers in detail at the end but you can see in the background the results are all vastly different. In one of the runs I got a red drop really early, in some of the other runs I didn't get them for ages. Uh, in a few of the runs I got no celestial tickets, in one of the runs I got one, in one of the runs I got two, uh, although that one lasted a bit longer. So yeah this is basically just letting this video serve as proof that the Steamworks itself isn't completely seeded in the same way that like the Melder is for example. And yeah I have those results on screen now so as you can see no tickets in two of the runs. Um, two tickets in one, one ticket in, in, in another. The the runs without tickets and the runs with one ticket all lasted for about an hour each. You can kind of tell by how much fuel was left at the end. And the one with two tickets was more like 100 minutes, so an hour and a half, just over that. And yeah, it's quite simple. Uh, if you don't get what you want, you quit to menu without saving. Obviously, I didn't save at all because I wanted the video to be proof that it wasn't seeded. But in the cases where I did get tickets after an hour, uh, you would save and quit. And you don't have to do it after an hour either. You could check every 30 minutes or even every 10 minutes. And again, I'll talk about the maths on how long you should wait in a second. But obviously, the, the more frequently you check, the more fuel you'll save. But at the same time, the more time you'll add because you'll have to be repeatedly loading back your save. And we are back in Spreadsheet Town. This is my dump sheet. I have it linked in the description of all my videos, uh, my missed data stuff. I have I, This is where I put basically everything that I test. Um, but yeah, we are back in this spreadsheet. And I just want to summarize the results here. I ran the test something like eight times, uh, the 100 minute run that gave me two tickets you can see here. Uh, I ran a 47 minute run with no tickets, 73 with one, 60 with none. I think these were the four you saw on screen and then there were a couple of other runs here. Uh, you can see I got one run that I got uh, spent only 34 minutes doing and I did get a ticket. So again, you can get it really quickly. You don't have to like do Steamworks for a minimum of an hour before it drops or anything like that. Now overall, I got four tickets over the course of 458 minutes, which averages out to roughly two hours per ticket, which my previous testing had sort of, uh, if, I, if I scroll up a bit and look at my previous results, yeah, on average, it was taking somewhere in the region of two hours to get per ticket. So that number seems to be accurate. However, the nice thing is the fuel saved by resets on zero. What this number means is if these runs here where I spent 47 minutes and got nothing, these ones I would quit without saving, whereas these runs here where I did get tickets um, within a reasonable amount of time, I would quit with saving and that way all the fuel that I spent during the zero runs would be saved. And I did the maths and I ended up saving roughly half the fuel. And because I am resetting once an hour, roughly on average here, uh, it does make sense that you'd get roughly 50%. Honestly, I didn't expect it to be this close given how RNG everything is. 54.8% is really good. But uh, yeah, it's the numbers line up and I'll talk about those numbers uh, now, I guess, using this table on the left. 
This spreadsheet is a little bit more messy. You put in these five inputs here based on your experience. So my time to reload was roughly 90 seconds to quit out of Steamworks to load without saving and then get back into Steamworks. It took me roughly 90 seconds each time. But if you don't have an SSD, that might be longer, for example. The ideal duration is how long you planned on leaving it uh, every time you check. Obviously, it wasn't exactly 60 minutes, but kind of averages out, doesn't it? Um, you can see from my results here. Uh, if you found that the Celestial Prince or whatever job you're going for has a different drop rate than 30,000 fuel per on average, even though I worked out 30,000, you could change this to, I don't know, 20,000, for example. And you can see the numbers update. I was pointing to them with my finger, you can't see that. But uh, yeah, the fuel spent per hour, this varies. So for me, when I have my macro on, and I should mention this, with the macro that skips the overdrive cutscene, you spend roughly 15,000 fuel an hour. Without it, you spend roughly 12,000 an hour. So if you're just holding R2 and letting it go, so update that accordingly. And fuel gather per hour, I've got a video on the channel of, of my method for gathering 50,000 fuel per hour. Um, if you don't follow that and you gather at roughly 30,000 fuel per hour, then obviously you can change this. And again, the numbers will update. So let's look at these intermediate values. Uh, these aren't the ones you should be particularly interested in, but they're worth explaining. The base drop time is pretty self-explanatory. It takes 30,000 fuel per celestial print, and I spend at 15,000 an hour. So I'm getting two, uh, it takes two hours per print on average, so 120 minutes. The time spent per drop, what this number is, 102.5%, this is basically saying it takes me 2.5% longer to do the reload time. So by having to reload every hour, and it takes 90 seconds each time, that adds roughly 2.5% to the time it takes for me to, to get the drops from Steamworks. And the fuel spent per drop is basically saying that by resetting every hour, I'm only I'm saving half the fuel, essentially. Which makes sense, doesn't it? Because it takes two hours on average to get a celestial print, and I'm resetting every hour, so I'm only spending one hour's worth of fuel to actually get the prints, because I'm resetting if I don't get any. And so, yeah, you'd expect half the fuel to be saved. Um, but yeah, 2.5% kind of makes sense, because I'm taking extra 90 seconds every 60 minutes. If you do 1.5 minutes divided by 60, you'll see that this represents a 2.5% increase. Yeah, there you go, 2.5%. So every 60 minutes, I'm adding an extra 2.5% of time just to reload my save, which I wouldn't otherwise have spent. However, those aren't the important numbers. These are the net time per drop, 156 minutes doesn't account for the reloading. I'll talk about why in a second. But basically, what this number represents is how much fuel, uh, like if I was to change how long the load spent, you can see that number doesn't change at all because that doesn't account for it at all. What this number represents is how long it takes for me to gather the 30,000 fuel and then spend the 30,000 fuel in order to get per print. So this basically accounts for gathering time. It's important to do now that gathering is the bottleneck with times 10 mode. Now this adjusted time per drop, what that does is it accounts for the saved fuel um, that you get by resetting and it also accounts for the extra time spent because you're having to reload and it takes those and produces a new number a time per drop um, and you can see that's 141 minutes so by doing this because fuel is still somewhat of a bottleneck you can see I save some time but not much where the numbers get interesting is when I take this into times 10 mode so if each drop takes on average 300,000 fuel and I spend fuel at a rate of rather than 15,000 150,000 now you can see that this makes a big difference, doesn't it? It goes down from 480 minutes per drop to 303 minutes per drop. Now the reason it's so much larger than before, even though you think it should all be the same, is because I'm having to spend so much more time gathering. Uh, I can gather 50,000 fuel per hour, but I need 300,000 on average to get my 10 times celestial print drop. And so yeah, that's why it takes so long. Now what this means, because this is the bottleneck, by taking down this idle duration, I can see you can see that it means that my average time goes down by a lot. If I take this down to resetting every 20 minutes, it goes down even further. Every 10 minutes, goes down even further. If I take it down to five minutes, ah, it goes up again because that's a little bit over the top. I'm adding so much load time in. But uh, yeah, you can see that if I, because of how much how expensive the fuel is, it actually does make mathematical sense to reset every 10 minutes or so. And you can tinker with these numbers. Download the spreadsheet. Tinker with the numbers, take your own fuel expenditure rates, take your own idle times based on your loading setup, and then mess around with this idle duration to see how long you should wait before resetting every time uh, to get optimal saves coming results. And that basically covers everything. You can see that by using this resetting method, you're more than halving the time on average you're going to spend gathering and spending fuel to get Celestial Revarian prints. Um, and uh, oh, and by the way, even though it says per drop, it should be per 10 drops because I've obviously have times the I'm going into times 10 mode where I'm, it's taking 10 times as much fuel because I have to spend 10 times as much, but it's also spending it at 10 times the rate because that's what 10 times mode is. Um, yeah, so sorry if that's a bit confusing, but this is net time per 10 drops, uh, essentially. Uh, on average, if you were to divide, divide these numbers by 10, you can see that we're taking down the average time per drop to something like 20 minutes, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, the average time per 10 drops here is what we're interested in. Um, so essentially a TLDR, by going into times 10 mode, because we're going to have to spend so much more time gathering fuel, uh, we end up shooting up the amount of time on average from two hours to more like three hours. Um, in fact, we send it up to something like six hours or even more than that, seven hours or eight hours, 480 minutes. Uh, however, by using save scumming to cut down how often, how much fuel we spend and how often we need to uh, to actually gather it, we can cut that time down to more like three hours or so per 10 drops, which really isn't that bad. I've put it at 20 minutes because I don't like checking every 10 minutes, but if you take it to 10 minutes, it's even faster. That said, I would recommend you download the sheet and change these numbers based on how fast you can gather. 
uh, based on whether or not you're using the macro, make this 12,000 or 120,000. Um, and it's sort of it, depending on your load times, change that too. I'm really sorry for the long winded mathematical video. Um, I, I'll give you a little treat. We'll do a little bit of extra maths just to, <laughs> just to thank everyone who's made it this far. Um, we can do a quick little calculation here. Let's take it up to times 10 mode, so 300,000 and 150,000. And you can see that our time, ZZ, YY, this number here went from 150 to like 480. Now, watch what happens if we replicate having a huge buffer of fuel so that we're never really interested in actually gathering fuel. So if you've bought up a huge buffer of fuel and you just want to spend it all, we can sort of simulate that by giving ourselves a huge fuel gather rate, which means we spend zero time gathering fuel, which, yeah, again, replicates what would happen if we had a huge buffer. Now, if I up this to 300,000, and I up this to 150,000, you can see 120, 138, 120, 138. The difference from shifting up to times 10 mod actually doesn't do anything because it's mathematically the exact same when you don't have to bother worrying about gathering. Of course, all of us do have to worry about gathering. So that's just kind of a, a cute little mathematical fact that shows the model's working as intended, but uh, it's not particularly relevant to everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped. I'm going to talk about how to use this in a, in a later video. But uh, yeah, hopefully this sort of made sense to you and hopefully the maths made sense. If it doesn't, just let me know in a comment or whatever um, and I'll try to explain further. But yeah, thank you for watching and have a lovely day. Bye.